few days ago, I did a video expressing the benefits of a carnivore diet. But today, we're going to talk about the dangers, so get ready. Welcome everyone to my very humble channel. Today, it may not feel so humble. Trigger alert, we're gonna go into it. There's a lot of people who are very dogmatic about carnivore diets. They're almost sort of culty in their way to perceive it. You see the same parallel lines with carnivore diet. Like, well, if you feel terrible, just do it harder. <laughs> like veganism. If you do, if you feel horrible, just go even harder, like eat fruit, look at the sun. And you're sort of getting this affectation with people doing a carnivore diet. Not that many people are talking about, can your body actually take it? Think about the individual. It doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. It doesn't matter how someone else has fared on a carnivore diet. That's not you. You might suffer from hypoglycemia. You might suffer from gallbladder issues. You might suffer from dysglycemia of your blood sugar, poor sleep, problems with high iron, B12. There are so many variables, low stomach acid. And then you hear these people are like, it's a miracle. I lost all this weight and everything's perfect. It cured everything. But then there's the rest of society where it doesn't go that smoothly for them. And of course, they're not online. But I expose the truth. It is a very tiny percentage of people that would fare well. And to be honest, I don't think anyone fares well over time. Now, the people that think that they fare well, like this woman commented uh, under one of my videos, and she said, you said that uh, you should only do carnivore for three months. Well, after four years, I healed everything. And I was like, okay, we got a problem, Scotty, on, on deck. If it took you four years to heal, then perhaps in that four years you were doing things wrong, like chronic dehydration, low blood pressure. There's a lot of variables on why that person took that long to get fixed. Typically, it should take about a year if you're severely damaged, about a year. If you're not damaged severely, it can take three to six months to heal your body. You have to consider these points, and I'm going to break them down now. That are the dangers. Let's go. Number one, chronic dehydration. Most of y'all are dehydrated before doing a carnivore diet or a keto diet. You drop out the carbs and you you start peeing a lot. Pee, 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 pee. You don't notice it because you're not paying attention, right? You're just like, oh, you can't wait to do this very, you know, glorious and glorified dietary lifestyle measure, whatever you want to call it. But you're dropping fluid and you're also dropping your minerals, right? You're losing sodium. You're losing potassium. You're losing magnesium. You're losing a lot of your minerals, especially if you're coming from the land of leaky gut, which a lot of you are. That's why a lot of you even do a carnivore diet because you've got holes in the gut wall. So the gut wall should be nice and tight. And what happens? It opens up. That can be from chemical exposure, stress. And that includes poor sleep, high iron, high B12, of course, coming from leaky gut. But the first thing you want to consider is the chronic dehydration. I don't care how much water you drink. If your body doesn't hold on to minerals, and if you drink too much water, you can dilute the sodium in your blood and constantly be thirsty and peeing. Make it make sense, right? The next problem is the gallbladder. I feel like 98% out of everyone that I do a consultation with has problems with their gallbladder. It's either tight, yes, it can get tight through stress, or their sludge, which is 
thick bile or their their stones that have formed right? stones that start forming in the gallbladder once you do a diet where you're eating ground beef and you're eating the fat on the ribeye or you're adding the rendered fat you can have mild symptoms or severe symptoms of like, oh, I feel so sick, I feel so bloated, I have neck pain, shoulder blade pain, greasy stool, loose stool, pale stool, yellow stool, and aversion to fat. That is the second biggest problem with carnivore diets. And people say, go harder, eat more meat, eat ounces and ounces of fatty meat, because now people, it's trending to eat fat, of course. I'm going to credit myself because I, I always said from the beginning, carnivore diets should always be high fat and not high protein. And after years, people are sort of sliding into the high fat problem. You want to know why? Because of the next problems, high uric acid, high urea, protein byproducts that are having to be filtered through the kidneys, plus you're dehydrated, eating tons of meat. And yes, well, in layman's terms, you're starting to have waste products sort of cake in the kidneys and it's painful especially if you're dumping minerals I know high b12 for those who have leaky gut so that's the next problem the leaky gut when your b12 is high or your iron is high it's because you're not absorbing these minerals you're eating all the red meat which you should be able to with no problem if you were in balance taking in all this red meat and all of a sudden you've got high B12. It's because it's not being absorbed. It's swimming higher and higher with nowhere to go. Lots of people have this and people who don't, they, they don't even know because they're not doing that blood test. So they don't know. So when people are like, oh my God, I'm fabulous. It's amazing. But they really don't know. A lot of these people don't test their blood sugar. They don't know that they have low blood pressure or pulse, heart rate. They don't even know. They're just going by weight or they're going by joint pain or some inflammatory problems they had before. But what about all the other things like dehydration, high uric acid levels, and people don't know. And then they take the test and they're like, whoa, my GFR is low. My urea is high. Are my, crun, or my uh, creatinine and bun levels or ratios are off. These are the things that are very problematic with a carnivore diet because people are eating enormous just enormous amounts of protein. Another problem is that people think that they're getting their fat from the ground beef or from the ribeye. It's not enough fat. You have to add rendered fat to get into ketosis. The problem is if you're eating a ribeye and it's got a lot of fat on it, it's not enough. You, it's not gonna, you're not going to hit 200 grams. So you eat another, you know, eight ounce ribeye or another. And now your fat's getting closer, but now you've eaten so much protein, now your blood sugar is going to spike. And that negates the, the ketone uptake and viability when there's so much protein in the body. People don't understand. It's way more complicated than eating a bunch of ribeyes and ground beef, especially for the fat. The next problem is hypoglycemia. Oh, lordy, lordy. Y'all are coming into the carnivore sphere with dysglycemia, high to low or hypoglycemia where it's low or hyperglycemia. People don't understand when you eat too much protein, what you can't use or what you don't use because a lot of you don't even have the equipment to break down the protein, stomach acids, pepsin, protease, all of these enzymes to break down meat. You don't have them and the stomach acid and you're eating too fast and then the body's like, whoa, hold up. I have a leaking gut. You're shoving all this protein down. So what I'm not using, I will convert into glucose. And then that protein becomes like a candy bar to your dysglycemia. If you're young and you've got good GLUT4 receptor development and the quality of meat and la, 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 la. Yeah. You're more, it's more possible that you, you will fare fine in the beginning, but most people are are not in that demographic I just described. People don't have enough glute for re receptor development to uptake glucose from protein conversion, right? Protein into glucose to use it. I do. That's why I don't post my meals. If I go over the amount of protein, I don't have hypoglycemia. 
go check people who eat a lot of protein. They're like, I fall asleep after eating a 12 ounce ribeye. I'm like, uh, duh. Think about it. If you're falling asleep after eating meat, something wrong, you are not breaking down and utilizing all that protein. But nobody talks about this stuff. Why is it that I am the only one talking about this stuff? Consultation after consultation, people are like, I didn't know. I didn't know. To me, it's just, it's like brushing your teeth. Why doesn't everyone know this stuff? It's so apparent and obvious that if you are chronically dehydrated and you're eating tons of protein, then you're going to have kidney issues, right? Low GFR. That's the rate at which your kidneys filtrate fluid and blood, blood fluid. That's a problem. It's, and if your kidney is not functioned, kidneys, that's going to weigh on your gallbladder and your pancreas. So we've got liver, kidneys, gallbladder, pancreas, and they all become affected because they're all connected to a series of plumbing here on the right side. Yes. Make sure your liver enzymes are on point. A lot of people are having sort of a little bit of a thickened liver and then everything else fails. Check your liver enzymes. A lot of you might be coming from the world of alcohol, wine every night, um, high blood sugar, like I mentioned before, dysglycemia or hyperglycemia. You can't get into ketosis when your blood sugar is running that high and you run into the problem of a thing called advanced glycation end product, which is like the damage, the glycation, damaging cells on protein. I know. Who would have thunk? You look at Michaela Peterson and like, oh my God, she's so amazing. Mm -mm. Because that leads me into the last, there's more, but I'll go into this one. If if you're not, if you're eating mono meats, you don't have a diversity, diversity of bacteria. We need that for the colon. Mm -hmm. Because if you have just same bacteria all the time, that means that one bacteria can overgrow and then that'll offset the rest. Yes, diversity. And that's what your body needs and is connected to the mind the depression, a lot of you, the whole hypoglycemia, people can suffer depression on a carnivore diet because they're chronically fatigued. But must I not forget the very, very last one, which is the thyroid. The adrenal thyroid actually in your reproductive issue, when you're eating the same food, you're not in ketosis because you're eating all that protein, remember? all that, It's all connected, like nose bone connect to the elbow. You're eating all that protein. You're not eating enough fat. I don't care how much fat is on your ribeye. doesn't matter. Use a glucometer. It'll show you the truth. And you are crashing. You're falling asleep after you eat a ton of protein. And you have an underlying thyroid problem. And it becomes aggravated. Hair starts falling out. You decide to fast with carnivore. It falls out more. You feel tired. You crash. But in the beginning, you lose weight, your inflammatory markers are down, and anything that slowly starts creeping in, people just ignore it because they're like, oh, risk-benefit ratio, all these good things happen, so I'm just going to ignore these things. And I did too. I did keto for five years before I actually had some problems with some electrolyte issues, right? Magnesium and potassium. But we hit like the fifth year mark when I started to develop melasma, right? Because, I mean, my symptoms of chronic dehydration were not that bad. I wasn't having the symptoms of low blood pressure, which is another one, really, until time went on. My body wasn't able to regulate the fluid, the communication between the cells. My hormones, magnesium is tightly connected to your hormones. I could go on and on. But the risks are thyroid problems, more dysglycemia, kidney issues, liver issues, chronic fatigue, low testosterone, because if your adrenals are constantly having to barf out cortisol because you're not in ketosis because you're eating too much protein, not enough fat, then that literally can tank your testosterone. And women, it can dominate your estrogen. And in men, and you can aromatize. I know. 
I could just go on and on and on. These are the dangers. Hypoglycemia, thyroid problems, dehydration, which can affect your heart over time. And I don't care who's just said they've done this for 20 years. These gurus literally leave out, they cherry pick the, the information. They tell you what you want to hear, but they don't tell you what you really need to know. And sometimes they don't even recognize these symptoms in themselves, in themselves. They don't. The story, her coaching story was absolutely atrocious. People are too formulaic with carnivore. They make it sound too easy. It's very individualistic. Some can do it. Some can't. And if these gurus were, were being honest, they'd say that. Some can do it. Most can't. Not for the long term. But there are benefits. Don't get me wrong. I did a video on the benefits. And they still exist. But don't ignore the pitfalls. Because they also exist. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook fan page is Stephanie the Business Person. I do a monthly course. You can sign up for that also through Stephanie person.com and I cover all three diets because I'm realizing some can do this some can't do that some cannot deal with the gallbladder so they do low carb high fat some people have food in their toilets so they have to do carnivore until they fix that open hole permeable leaking gut you got to seal it up and I'm out comment below have you had a bad experience on carnivore are you confused on what to do Comment below. I'm curious. Don't forget to share this content and subscribe to this humble channel because if I wasn't humble, I would put my ass in a bikini and I would sell weight loss at 56. And I'm out. Energy!